This is Physical Chemistry, Part Two, Chemical Kinetics, Chapter Thirty Four, Transport Phenomena, Section Thirty Four Point One. What is transport? Let's define flux. Flux is a quantity transferred through a given area in a given amount of time. For example, if we are looking at the flux of gas particles, then this is the amount of gas particles transferred through this given area per unit time. When the density of the gas particles is high, we observe higher flux. Flux also varies by how the boundary faces the direction of flow. In here we have more flow. In here we have less flow. When this surface area contains the direction of the flow, or In parallel with the direction of the flow, there is no flux. Over here, this surface area is perpendicular to the direction of the flow, and then we have the maximum flux. Well, of course, flux is proportional to the area within the boundary. If you have a larger surface area, you have more flux. Flux. Is proportional to the spatial gradient in the transporting property. So let's use this surface area as an example. If you have a higher pressure of gas on here, lower pressure of gas here, and then we observe this flow. But what if the pressures on the left hand side and on the right hand side are exactly the same? Then overall, there is no flux. The flux is proportional to the spatial gradient in the transported property. So I'm going to explain why there's a negative sign here. This is because when you look at this picture, the density of the gas particles is higher on the left hand side, lower on the right hand side. So this, from right to left, is The increasing order of the density of the gas particles. The flux, however, is in the opposite direction. That's why we put a negative sign here. Alpha is just a parameter. Alpha is defined differently for the transport of mass, or heat, or some other physical quantities. Section thirty four point two, mass transport. It's also called diffusion. The property being transported can be matter, energy, linear momentum, or charge, or some other properties. Correspondingly, the process is called diffusion. When matter is transported, thermal conductivity when energy is transported. Viscosity, when linear momentum is transported, or ionic conductivity when the charge is transported. Well, this is a general equation for diffusion. d n over d t is how the number of particles change with time. J sub x is the flux. A is the surface area, or Cross-sectional area. So now let's look at this small volume between x and x plus dx. So we have this silence of dx. Inside this volume, we have influx that increases the number of particles in the volume. We have outflux that decreases. The number of particles inside this volume.、Uh, this is the influx. J sub x has this equation. 
Okay, and over here, this n tilde is the density of n. dn tilde over dx is the gradient of the density. We also have an equation for outflux at a different position. The position is x plus dx. So again, the influx takes place here. The outflux takes place here. Right? So at this position and this position, we have different spatial gradients of the density of the particles. Now let's look at the net difference between the influx and outflux. Influx minus outflux is this. All right, so what you need to do is very simple. You need to use this, subtract this. The result is negative d times the second derivative of density times dx. So again, over here, this is the second derivative of the number density of the gas particles. All right. Uh, maybe I should use the regular font for this exact differential here. Now we can calculate how the number of particles inside this volume from x to x plus dx at time t, how does this change with time? So it's influx minus outflux times the area. And then we get this equation, all right? So this part is denoted by n tilde, double prime. Double prime means second derivative. Both sides divided by the volume of the container. This volume is a times dx. And then remember, tilde is the number density. It's the number of particles over the volume, so right here. So we got this equation. Uh, because dx is infinitesimal, so we can uh, replace the density of the volume with the density at position x. All right. We assume the density at position x is the same as the density inside the box. And then we need to solve this differential equation. Uh, this n tilde is the density of the gas particles. x is the position, t is time. The solution of this differential equation is right here. All right, it's just given to you. We can prove that this is a solution to this differential equation by plugging this n tilde in the left-hand side and also in the right-hand side. So first, let's plug in this expression in the left-hand side. So plug in here. Uh, this is a function of time. We just need to take the first derivative of this function. Uh, the steps can be tedious, but I'm showing you the result here. The result is this exponential function times this function of time and position. And then we plug in this equation in the right hand side. Uh, similarly, we just need to take derivatives. This time we need to take the second derivative of the number particle, the number density of the particles with respect to x. Uh, the steps can be more tedious, but in the end, uh, we get the same result. So we just proved that uh, this is equal to this uh, when n tilde is this. And this is a legitimate solution to this differential equation. And similarly, if we multiply this expression by a constant c, it's still a legitimate solution. All right, so C is just a constant. Specifically, C is the normalization factor that satisfies this equation. So this is to ensure that uh, the total number of particles is a naught. And by solving this equation, we plug in the expression of n tilde. We solve for C, and C can be
determined over here. C is n naught over 2a times the square root of pi d. So this normalization factor ensures the total number of particles uh, from position negative infinity to positive infinity is n naught. Uh, this is uh, the final equation we get uh, that can be used to calculate the number density of the gas particles at position x at time t. All right, it's a function of time t and x. We have a similar equation for thermal conductivity. Uh, thermal conductivity is the transport of energy. All right, so it's not uh, the mass transport, it's the heat transport. Uh, but we do have a similar equation. Uh, this is temperature. The temperature at position x at time t is proportional to 1 over the square root of t times uh, e to the power of negative x squared over 40 t. So this part is exactly the same as this part. And also you have square root of t on the bottom. All right. However, we are not looking at the transport of gas particles. Right? We're looking at the transport of kinetic energy. Uh, if you are interested in this topic, or if you major in chemical engineering or mechanical engineering, uh, like to study the, this uh, sections yourself. However, these sections are less relevant to chemical kinetics.